Yeah, I'm out there, world. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Concrete Slave Ship. The Robinson Uncut Prison Commentary this side of the Paco. Featuring none other than myself, your host and interpreter, Cypher. Tell somebody to tell somebody, as long as it ain't the you-know-who. And that's my motto would go. Ain't nothing going on over here. Opinion your gland, positive vibes only. And without further ado, y'all know the business. You heard me? So, uh, but before we start the business, I need everybody to like the video. Like the video right now, man. I appreciate that, you heard me? I dropped these, this content and shit, you heard me? These real life stories, this is real shit. I can't make it up, you heard me? So if you appreciate what I'm doing, bro, you heard me? Hit the like for, button for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you, and, and if you haven't told somebody yet to tell somebody, tell them to subscribe too, you heard me? Nah, we're going to jump right off to this episode because I know y'all done hit that like button for me, right? Thumbs up. Uh, so bam, nigga that stole on me, boom, broke my jaw, you hear me? So, but at the time he hit me, I don't know the nigga had got me, you feel what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't know it's broke, but I feel some type of way. It's like I said, uh, uh, I'm really incoherent. I'm not 100%, you hear me? Like, I'm off of my rockers, you know what I'm saying? Like this nigga done, this nigga done fuck with my equilibrium a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I can't really do do much with this nigga but tussle with him. I can't really put these bitches in his face like I really want to, right? So boom, man, this nigga wind up going to the hole, right? So uh, go to the hole and shit, I wind up going to uh to the medical and uh, they tell me, you know, damn, your jaw might be broke because it's steady swelling, right? So, you know, they couldn't really tell they ain't had a, uh, equipment or whatever to find out that with no x-rays or nothing so they shipped me to Shreveport, Louisiana which is about I guess uh 65 miles away from Natchitoches north of Natchitoches going towards uh Dallas on I-49 so uh I get up there to Shreveport and shit right so I'm in this little holy cell with all of these inmates and shit these inmates from jails after jail nigga might have got stabbed up in here nigga might have got his jaw broke up in here I was one of them Nigga got uh, might have got his arm broke from shooting basketball, or nigga might have broke his hand from fighting. You know, we got niggas in here getting fixed. Most of them going to see the orthodontics. You know what I'm saying? The bone doctors. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So uh, I'm in this bitch. I'm quiet, man. I don't want to talk to nigga. I'm really feeling played. I'm embarrassed. Only thing I can think about is retaliation on the nigga who got me here. You hear me? So uh, I wind up getting my shit wired up, man. So when I come back to the jail and shit, I come back to the jail, man, and uh. They tell me, look, uh, we ain't gonna put you back there in B dorm, cause like I tell you, back there in B dorm, A dorm, police out here. We gotta get these trays here in a second. You hear me? None of y'all rock with me though. But yeah, on B dorm, and that's a thunder dorm. You know what I'm saying? Terror dorm. So they ain't gonna put me back there with my with my mouth wide, cause they figured like you know I was already chaotic and hunt buggers. You feel me? I would have got into some other shit. You hear me? And I probably would have probably got my shit rewired on some shit. I probably got the other side broke or something, right? So uh, they wind up to put me up front, right in the trusty dorm, the kitchen dorm, around these niggas and shit. So I'm up there. I'm up there with busy and CW. I don't know if uh, Br up there, but uh, uh I'm up there with busy and CW. It's the bullshit they just gave me. Chips, two breads. I don't eat these. I'm gonna throw these on the floor. You hear me? And look like some egg salad or something. You can't see that. And some cookies. I'm a vegetarian. What you giving me? I ain't got now a piece of vegetable on here. You hear me? These white folk crazy. You hear me? <laughs> but that's how that's how they coming up in this bitch. So all you youngsters out there. Y'all stay up out this bitch. If you don't want to eat what they feed you, you don't want to shit whenever with a silly smell of your shit, you don't want to uh, sleep in this bitch when a nigga snoring, stay away from here, partner. You hear me? Ain't nothing happening with this inside this concrete slave ship. You hear me? It may sound like I glorify this shit or like, you know, it's all good with me, but this ain't good with me, homie. You hear me? I miss my babies every day. I'm ready to get it back out there in that world, you heard me? And then I chance to, I take the chances of killing a nigga in here or a nigga killing me. Because it's that aggressive in this prison that I'm in, right? You know, I still can't disclose my state to y'all. Eventually, I probably will, but not right now and no time soon, you heard me? Or maybe when I get back in general population or something. But anyway, man, back to this nigga, man. Uh, they brought me back and put me up in the trusty dawn. So I'm up in here with Busy. CW and I think this nigga uh, BR up in here too, right? So uh, while I'm up in here, man, 
They cool with the canteen lady, the canteen lady named Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia was a light skinned chick, kept her hair neat, her nails done, and toes, kept her toes out and shit. Fly, she was an old, older woman at the time. Like I say, I wouldn't, but I was in my mid 20s, so I know Sophia had to be like in her mid 40s or something, you hear me? But she was nice, you hear me? Uh, knock me slim, you hear me? <laughs> but uh, she was locked in, visiting was locked in with. With her, her, him, and CW. And these was my niggas, right? So when I fall in the dorm and shit, immediately, Sophia, she pull up on the nigga and bring a nigga some more, uh, some ice cream, uh, no, not ice cream, uh, jello in the little plastic cups and shit. So she, she serving me. So I'm, I'm feeling that she bringing me, uh, Oatmeal, especially the oatmeal. You know, this shit that you get from Walmart, you ain't buying this. This ain't no penitentiary commissary or nothing. But she popping me off on the street. Uh, CW and busy because them her niggas and she know them my niggas, right? And then, like I say, when I used to be up in the hole and shit, she used to pass through there all the time telling me, boy, you need to stop that. Stop acting the fool and need people jail. You hear me? But I couldn't hear it or see it. You feel me? I'm, I'm tore up. I, all I knew is they couldn't handle me in the jail. They couldn't deal with me. You feel me? And I was trying to let that be known, but I wasn't known that this time around. This is like my second time through here, and I really wasn't known all of that dumb shit. You hear me? That I was on prior to I, I left here because I'm seeing a, a bigger picture now. When I get back, all of my partners, they don't trust these shit. These niggas working in the kitchen door, and these niggas moving around on the hallway at, at will. Shit, I want some of that in my life, but I'm still not capable of doing it because I'm still not DOC. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm still a pre-trial. But like I say, I'm back on that court situation that I skipped trial on after them two months and I ain't come back for they finally caught me and I'm back here now, right? So now I'm pending trial, pending court. They think, you know, I'm supposed to go take the six years, but I got another plan. I'm paying my lawyer. I'm trying to get four years. You heard me? Because Louisiana, by now, they didn't gave me five years. They gave me five years on the tip and the disarm the police officer and the battery. That's all they really cared was five. So they gave me the max on. They gave me five years, and it wasn't aggravated. You heard me? But I got that five now, so I'm good. I'm yeah, I'm Joseph. You heard me? So I'm thinking, see, if I get the six years, this how I go in Louisiana for is legally uh speaking, you feel me? Or uh, and say I got a five year sentence, right? It's smaller than the six year sentence. So you can't you can't run a six year sentence into a five year sentence. Why? Because the five year sentence is the controlling sentence, right? So in order for me to get something ran into this five, it's gonna have to be smaller than the five, right? So it's it's like Pac-Man, the five can gobble it up, right? Because the five is the controlling sentence. But if I get that six, Ain't nowhere in the world you can run that, that and then they can't they can't take that six and run that five into that six because that six is not the controlling uh case. You feel what I'm saying? If y'all follow me, you heard me? So uh so now my strategy is to get me four. Four or five. I can get four or five on on this uh on these aggravated assaults, you heard me? So uh boom, I'm back for that there, but I haven't went with the court yet. So anyway, uh whilst I'm in that bitch, man. Uh, I'm, I'm back in D dorm. Mich no, I, I don't. I, they done took the took the wires out of my mouth. Been six weeks. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think it, I think it was like five weeks. But I get into it with a nigga before I go back to the hospital and get the wires took out my mouth. Right? I mean, this nigga had got into it, man, on some verbal shit. I don't like I say, man. Niggas knew that I was with the shit. Period. Right? But now my mouth was wired up, so I felt like nigga was playing on my intelligence. Then a nigga probably wasn't. It's probably just me institutionalized and fucked up. Like, you know, I'm PTSD like a motherfucker on some shit, you hear me? I done been through a whole lot of shit, not only just in these jails, but on the outside of these jails, you know what I'm saying? From a little nigga all the way up. Like I said, I've been to LTI, and LTI really, you know, fucks, fuck young niggas up. They ain't rehabilitating you or reforming you. They actually making you better criminals, right? And when I left that motherfucker, I was a seasoned criminal. Like I say, from a uh, juvenile delinquent to a seasoned criminal. But anyway, uh, I get into it with this nigga, man. And this nigga real aggressive, like verbally, though. He ain't really trying to run up on me. Nobody got to stop him from doing none of that, you hear me? But I'm gonna get down with this nigga. I'm like five weeks into my, my healing process. But this nigga really talking crazy. Now I'm like, really wanna fuck with something too, you hear me? But then, boom, visit them. I, like I said, they been in the dormitory with these niggas, so they know him. So them niggas kinda stepped in and was like, nah, man, y'all chill. Then them niggas really ain't really wanna see me get down anyway, cause I already had my shit, you know, 
wired up, you hear me? So uh, everything there died down. But anyway, I wound up going back to the hospital and get my shit pulled out. When they pulled my shit out, you dig what I'm saying? Shout out to me, Sophia, for popping off all that, them, that, that soft food that I could eat, all them, you know, them all uh, in them insures and all of that good shit. She was, you know, sending that to a real nigga, you hear me? But uh, they wind up sending me back, get my shit pulled. And when I get it pulled, they and come back. They moved me back to D dorm, right? They moved me to D dorm this time, so they get me out to trusty dorm, put me in D. So I'm in D dorm now. So I stay up in D dorm a few months, man. Why is I'm up in there and shit? Or oh, it's got a, it's got, it's got this nigga, man. I can't think of this nigga name, but uh, this nigga is a gay nigga, right? And uh, this nigga about six feet, you hear me? And this nigga kind of bowed up a little bit, you hear me? But you know, like he from this little country town, so everybody in the town know everybody business, and everybody knew his business, right? So word was is that this nigga used to knock niggas out on the street and take the dick. Yeah. So I used to hear all of this shit about this nigga. You did? Damn, I can't think of this nigga name, man. But anyway, uh, I'm sitting at the table playing with this nigga, and I know the stories about this nigga. Like I say, in Louisiana, we're a different type of animal. Nigga don't discriminate about, you know, if a nigga, uh, if he gay or he a punk or this, that. Nigga don't care nothing about that. Nigga, your business is your business. You know what I'm saying? It, it used to be the cold in penitentiary. What goes on in penitentiary? Stay in penitentiary. In Louisiana, and for the most, that's how niggas really play it. You feel me? So whatever you had going on in the penitentiary, niggas be leaving that shit in the joint down there. You hear me? That's the old law. I don't know about now how they really play, but that's how it go. And then when you in the pen, it's like you see and you don't see. We don't care nothing about what you got going on. If you do this, I ain't going to drink behind you. I don't smoke. I don't smoke. So I ain't going to smoke behind you even if I did smoke. You feel me? Like, And I ain't going to do nothing you know, secondhand behind. You know what I'm saying? Because in the penitentiary, they call niggas who you know drink or eat after... Uh, punks or something, uh, them secondhand dick suckers. You feel me? <laughs> that's 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 how I go down there. But anyway, man, man, this nigga playing chess. I'm not playing chess with this nigga. I shouldn't even never be playing chess with this nigga. You know, cause when I play chess, I like to talk shit. So like I'm verbal, I'm vituperating this nigga. I'm verbally abusing this nigga, right? Uh, while we playing chess. But I, it's all funny games to me. I ain't even focus on him because he really ain't no hell of a chess player. He, he really just basic. I'm just busting him up, you heard me? And so something slipped out the nigga mouth. While I'm talking shit, I guess he, he want to retaliate verbally, so he do. But what he do, what he did was cross the line with me, and I wasn't fucking with that, so I had to get on the nigga ass. So while we playing chess, I said something, then the nigga double back and say, uh, shit, let me touch your ass. I say, touch my ass? I say, nigga, what you say? Bitch ass nigga. I come up from off the table, got a little uh, 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 a stop sign built iron table with four stools around this bitch. He's sitting on across from me and I'm sitting across from him. You feel me? Or uh, I come up from around that bitch and he getting up. Cause I guess he can see it's real. I, I walk up on him and then he ain't really used to how a nigga be playing it on the on no gangster shit because he really wasn't no penitentiary dude. This dude come from the streets like that. Nigga didn't turn him out or force him to do nothing. This is what he was doing on the streets, right? So uh I forgot this nigga name, man. But uh bam or uh, I walk up on him, I say, I say, now what you had said? So he smirked and I hit him. Pow! Yeah, I just come out the hospital from a broke job. I don't care nothing about none of that. Yeah. So boom, I hit the nigga. Boom, 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 got the shower right there. I walked the nigga towards the shower. Boom, 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 boom. He dropped in the shower. Dropped the nigga. So uh, he get back up fast, fast. And this nigga got scuffled with him. Like, I got a situation on my hand, but I know I, I, I'm out maneuvering him. I'm doing him, you heard me? So boom, he get back up. Boom, 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 boom. He fall, hit the floor again. The nigga jumped up quick, but the shower, he, now he back off in the shower. And the shower kind of slipping because niggas been showering in there. So he flipping everywhere. So and as he doing that, I'm countering. Boom, 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 boom. Get right, you heard me? So, boom, he come out there, bitch. He he all fucked up. You ought to bust his lip, his his nose, his eye. He like, but he just really cut cut up bad. But he bleeding from his mouth and his eye fucked up, you heard me? So, uh, I'm talking shit. I'm to the bitch ass nigga. Don't never play with me like that. The fuck you think I am up here? Nigga, I'll smash you up here. He ain't said nothing. He real still. I got his mind all the way right. I shouldn't have never been playing with this nigga anyway. But like I say, this nigga don't come off as no, 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 no punk to me. This nigga come off. As a, as a nigga, but, you know, it just slipped my mind that, damn, you, you know, come on, man, you ain't supposed to even have conversations with no, with no, with, with no punk, especially in the penitentiary, about kicking. We can't play games, because, nigga, if you say anything, I'm probably going to bat you in your mouth, because you a bitch nigga, you feel me? But anyway, uh, that situation, that passed, man, so, uh, 
boom, it's got this female, man. She walking. She just come back to work. She used to work at this jail, right? You know, uh, she had to quit. She wasn't fired or they didn't live out. She quit because she was going through some shit with her old man and shit. And her old man used to work here too at this jail, right? You uh, know, they say he was on dope. Then rumor was they had her on dope. You no, know, this everybody know everybody business in this town, right? So uh, word was they had her on the dope, but shit, I couldn't tell. She looked like she been eating ham hocks and cornbread all her life. You heard? But well, let me describe it for you, man. She had that Tony Braxton. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna say Anita Baker look, and I'm gonna say Anita Baker because I know the majority of my viewers, y'all between 35 and and 45. You heard me? That's like 67 percent of my viewers i'll be watching all of that shit i'm on there with the analytics in this uh youtube studio i'm on all that right you uh, know like females small small percentage i think it's like uh 1.7 percent females and then like from from uh that's for as gender based and as far as the youngsters I, it's only like 2.5 percent you know what i'm saying so most of my audience my core audience is basically from uh 25 to 50 Five, you know what I'm saying? But more in that area right there. But anyway, that's why I say Tony Braxton, because I know y'all can relate to that. Or I could have said Monica. You remember how Monica used to have hair? And she like brown skinned, you know, just a little lighter than me. Real, real pretty, pretty skin, you heard me? And uh her lips, my nigga, her lips was so beautiful. You feel me? Like they was real pinkish. They didn't even match the rest of her rest of her complexion, you feel me? So uh and she got the haircut, like like I say, that little Tony Braxton or that little, uh, that Monica, you heard me? She got the little party in it to the side and the gag with the gag, you heard me? So I'm at the window and I'm stalking like every nigga should be or every nigga would be up here in the front because, you know, this is where the females at. So I'm at the window and I'm looking at her. So I heard about her too, like I just gave you a little uh, brief description of her. So I'm looking at her from her head to her feet. I'm like, man, this thing here nice. But what's most attractive to me is her lips, right? I love her lips, man. So, uh... She walking around casually, niggas hollering, beating on the window. Hey, how you doing now? You heard me? So, uh, and she just nonchalant, just walking by the business. And to me, she give off an aura of respect and professionalism. That's how I took her. You feel me? So, uh, boom, while she on, a few niggas then hit the hit the shower on them. But you don't know what extent the niggas in the shower may go. Some of them niggas might be sneak hitters. A sneak hitter is a nigga, you know, he ain't going to catch her while she looking. He going to wait till she pass her, turn her back, and then hit her like this. He's sneaking the home. You hear me? But you got some real live hitters who they want eye contact and they want reciprocation from the broad, right? If they in this shower area and they jacking off on them, right? So that's how they coming. Like, with me, I really was a sneak hitter. <laughs> you feel me? I really had to build up my courage, my courage to fuck with these females like that. It just for one, it was I know it's disrespect, and for two, it's embarrassing for myself to be doing that, and especially in my position in a prison. Feel me? I, I looked at that, all of that like my mind was just open to all the different aspects of the jack off game. You feel me? So uh boom, a few niggas winning that came out successful. You hear me? Like I say, in the shower area, man, the key can see straight through the shower, but nobody else can't see the shower from the dormitory. Now, if you're in the window across, across the other door, because it's all glass out, they can see over there. But you know, if nigga, you're in the shower, it's all hidden area. Everybody out the way. You feel me? If nigga come to the, to the window and he just looking for a bar, and he look over here, just having to look over and see a nigga in the shower that he know hit him, oh, nigga pushing out ASAP. Nigga can't stay there, you feel me? Nigga know it's blasting going on. Gun line, boss. You heard me? Yeah, state of Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, Paris and Nagatis, you heard me? So anyway, uh, she, I, I go get my shit. I go, I say, shit, I'm finna test. I'm finna see what she working with, you heard me? So like I say, I'm a sneak hitter. I ain't really know why I don't hit her. So boom, she making it around. She's sexy too. She gave me a nice little attraction, little appeal with herself, you heard me? So uh, I goes up in there, and boom, I'm stroking on her. I'm stroking on this shit. Boom, she make that round and she and she come back. I guess she she peri uh, peripheral in me. You feel me? And she see what I'm up to. So boom, she hit that window. Boom, boom, boom. Get your ass out and she stood there. And I immediately turned the shower off, grabbed my dog towel. 
I'm buck naked. She can see every my whole body in this bitch, right? So boom, I went to dry it out. Boom. She, I said, oh shit. She getting ready to come in the door. Now she fit to put me on blast, right? Straight embarrass me. When she, what she did at the window, that was cool. Niggas at the in the dorm, they saw what was happening. Niggas say, uh, say Irk. She, she, she like she gonna holler on you, but nigga, she done already hollering on me and on slick. So boom, she push out, come in the dorm. It's got this cage right there, like I told y'all. So she come up in there, man. She like. Get your ass up out that shower, goddamn it. I bet not catch your ass up in there no more. If I do, I'm gonna write you up and send your ass to the hole. I come out, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My hands up. You ain't gotta worry about me no more. Boom. I get my towel, dry off. Boom. Everybody up in that bitch laughing at me. You heard me? <laughs> That's how you, nigga, you gonna get the hall of shame or the hall of fame. Nigga, you gonna, when you, like, even when you having a fight, you come down that long walk to the front. And you gotta pass all of them dorms, all, all of them dorms and all of them glass houses. Nigga, if you bust up, Hall of Shame. If you come through that bitch bouncing town crazy, Hall of Fame, you hear me? Nigga recognizing that, even with the jack all gang. If a hoe blow you down and, you know, put you on blast, Hall of Shame, you feel me? Everybody in the dormitory laughing on you, you feel me? But everybody here, so everybody hoping that they never have to go through that Hall of Shame. So anyway, uh, man, they doing some consolidating and shit again, right? So uh, they wind up moving me out of d dorm to G Dorm, G Dorm right next to it. So, uh, and like I say, I'm back now, man, and I'm getting ready to go to court. I got this five years already, right? So I'm DOC now, but I just got to pin the case, right? So, uh, boom, when I get back, now I can get a job because I'm DOC. I'm not just pre trial detainee. So, bro, remember I was telling you about Turner, right? The bald head uh, lieutenant who tried to slam it to the floor and shit. I think this nigga wind up getting me to drop, man. Because, you know, after I done gave this nigga so much trouble and shit, you heard me? And he see I done came back with a new attitude to this, to this jailhouse. You know, the nigga looking out for me, lipping on the slick, you heard me? But he he, he really, like, kind of, you know, off. He, he, he looking out for me, trying to see what I'm really, you know. His nigga know I'm ignorant. He know I'm ignorant. You feel me? So he trying to see is I'm really that or is this a facade I'm, I'm putting up for him, you hear me? But anyway, man, that nigga asked me, could I cut hair? Yeah, I can cut hair. Nigga, I don't know how to cut no motherfucking hair. You hear me? So uh, nigga, I get the job. I get the barber job. So now I'm, I'm, I'm cutting hair. And like I say, this big nigga plug, this nigga plug, he one of the first niggas I did, but he got a bald head, so I know I'm going to get away with that, you hear me? He uh, come in there, uh, hey man, I need a barber. Like I say, plug, he work for the administration. He do miscellaneous jobs and shit. He help around with everything, but most of the thing, he round that bitch finagling, you know what I'm saying, getting money, and probably busting up a couple of these females. You feel me? That's the type of nigga he was, but why these niggas was steady calling him a rat and saying he doing this and they ain't have no proof or no information on that. This nigga was balling out of control up there with the free folks, right? And like I say, he was up in the uh, trusty dorm too. So uh, I wind up cutting that nigga, uh, balling that nigga. He like to keep his hair balling and so stay fresh. That's how you know a nigga get to playing on these bras in the jail. When you see a nigga always trying to stay fresh, keep his shit groomed up, you hear me? You know, sort of like I got my shit right now, you hear me? So uh, I shave his head and shit. Like, appreciate you saying, man, I, I need you, hurt, man. I'm, I'm going to keep letting you shave my shit. All right, cool. Boom, man, the nigga built a rapport like that, man. The nigga was kind of... Cool, you feel what I'm saying? On the street in there, because he used to come in that bitch at least once or twice a week, get his shit shaved, you hear me? So anyway, I got the barber job. So one day, man, I'm out here cutting hair and shit. You got, we gonna call her, uh, Miss Peoples. You feel me? Because she really was my people. You feel me? But we gonna call her Miss People. You know, this pretty thing who, who, who came back to work and walking around here looking good with them pretty lips. Yeah, we gonna call her Miss Peoples. You feel me? Yeah, to protect the guilty, right? Cause she still work at that at that camp right now. So we're gonna call her Miss Peoples. Anyway, man, I'm out here cutting me and my work partner, and you got Miss Peoples standing up against the wall and shit. Looking her look. She got her arms crossed like this. She got one of her feet up against the wall. And she looking sexy. She got them little steel toe boots on like, mm, mm, mm. You hear me? So I'm just cutting hair and shit, you did. Casually cutting hair, you know, I ain't tripping off nothing. You know, and I know she right there, but this how I be playing, you know. I'm with the hard of seduction on some real nigga convo. You hear me? So uh I'm saying to myself, oh, I'm like, shit, I bet you're an Aries. The reason why I'm an Aries, and the reason why I say that, because of the attitude that she got. Like I say, she done put me on blast and shower. And you know, females, they forgive, but they never forget. You hear me? So I'm just talking. I say, I, I bet you're an Aries. And she looked at me like, huh? She said, how you know that? I, she, I don't know, you know. But I ain't say nothing. I just smiled to myself and kept 
kept cutting, but I judged her off of her personality. You feel me? The way she carries herself. That's some airy shit. We fucked up on the slick. You hear me? But we don't care nothing about telling the nigga out of mind. You hear me? Or getting it off out of her mind. You did? So uh, she's standing right there. So I, I'm, I'm continue to cut. So I, you know, I pause between what I'm talking. I'm just talking. I ain't even looking at her. You hear me? So I say, I say, Miss Peoples. She said, yes. And she looked at me. She gave me a look of, of interest, of intrigue. That's it. She was intrigued about what I was about to say. Right? And she was real curious about that. So I say, she, you ever been on the, and I'm looking at her, in her eyes now, like you ever been on the, oh, uh, Surprise picnic. She put her hand, you know how female put their hand right here in they in their cleavers or whatever. And like she like she shook or got the trivers or something. I'm like, Lord have mercy, what the fuck I just said? Boom, she walked off. I'm like, damn. I ain't saying niggas niggas right here with the barber, they ain't the niggas in the chair, they ain't peeping with other people. You hear me? But I'm like, shit, I really didn't know. Tapped in with something right here, you hear me? So boom, I'm steady cutting hair anyway. And the situation that in, man. So baby. Like I say, uh, shit, I'm steady fucking with my nigga Busy, and this, and this nigga, uh, I'm fucking with Busy and this nigga CW, right? They up front and shit in the, in the trustee dorm, in the kitchen dorm and shit today, and plus they be helping out Miss Sophia with the canteen. They be pulling up, and every time they pull up, I be seeing these niggas, but now I'm, I'm sitting my mobile because I got the, uh, haircut job and shit, right? So, you know, I'm pushing I, as far as I can go is to the uh, laundry room with the car. And then from there, back on back, I can might make me a trip down the book and what have you. But like I say, I'm new out here, so I don't really want to take advantage or, or, or seem like I'm out of place or nothing. You hear me? So, uh, boom. Uh, me and this nigga busy. Uh, well, matter of fact, let me run that to y'all before I jump back off into this nigga busy. He in the kitchen doing right, but he beefing with this old nigga named Mr. Grayson. You hear me? Now, I told y'all about that in the last year, but we didn't go into no detail what the beef was about. What happened was, Busy used to be finagling his way around the kitchen and shit, manipulating they mind and shit, because Busy was locked in with the warden. We used to call the warden Big Papa. He was an old black man, you know what I'm saying? Old school, throw back like a motherfucker from the, from the 50s or something. You know what I'm saying? He had a little black afro with Little speckles of gray in it, you hear me? With glass, but the nigga know how to get money. He was making money at that camp off of everything from the garden to the catering. They had all type of shit going on at this little jail, you hear me? But Big Papa had his hands in everything. And he had the choir, CW and Busy. Them niggas was in the choir. And the choir, they had a quartet too. Four niggas, four old niggas. These niggas sang like the fucking, uh, the duets, the, uh, uh, uh what them niggas name? The Pips. Gladys Knight and the Pips. Like, these niggas have to really, really blow. You hear me? So, uh, them niggas going out in the free world. So, I'm peeping all this. And I like that. I won't, shit, I wouldn't mind fucking with that. But it's almost impossible for them to do anything. And then I cause too much trouble at these people jail. You feel me? So, I know they ain't fit to let me fuck with none of that. You hear me? So, bam, uh, uh, where we at? Oh, yeah. Busy getting to Mr. Grayson in the kitchen. Uh, about some shit, cause Mr. Grayson went told the warden on Busy about some little petty shit, and uh, Busy like warden ain't do nothing. You feel me? But Busy like, mm -hmm, like basically saying you can't fuck with me. I'm locked in, nigga. I got favor, you heard? So, but Mr. Grayson somehow wound up kicking Busy out that kitchen. Boom! But see, Busy worked it for the free people. He prepared their food and shit too. So. You can't really fuck with what free folks getting in, in, in the war. You I'm like this nigga busy worked up under them. He prepared they fool him in CW. You hear me? So boy, you you fucking with with they established right now by fucking with busy. So boom, Mr. Grayson kicked busy out the kitchen, sent him to the back. Boom, it wasn't long. Busy come back up to the front. <laughs> he fell up in D dorm, right? This nigga fell up in D dorm. So uh. Me and Busy, we sitting at the table and shit. We playing chess, right? No, we playing Scrabble. You feel what I'm saying? So uh, we used to have the Scrabble pieces in a, uh, in a sock, right? And, and you had to shake them. It didn't reach enough. But we used to play so many games, man. Let me see if I can find a fucking sock. Nigga used to have a sock like this with the Scrabble pieces in there. Nigga used to be shaking the sock like this. And then 
filling the pieces like the blanks you could fill them and they all blank or the x or the z you could tell that's them and them the big numbers so we nigga be playing all type of mind games in the jump man nigga motherfucker you heard me so nigga come out there with with all the blanks and all the x's and z's and nigga getting all the money but everything man this nigga playing uh scrabble and mr grace had pulled up this nigga that came from the back so uh mr grace is seeing the nigga coming to throw nigga bone see him so bone fit to be antagonistic right bone say uh yeah uh, mm hmm. You, you, you showed me your hand, huh? Uh, Mr. Grace say, Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I showed you my hand. Uh, and you call, huh? Bitch say, Yeah, yeah, I call. Yeah, you, you got that one. But I still got chips, though. You heard me? Like on some poker shit, you know, because we play poker too. So, really, nigga, like using the metaphor for the poker as far as this mind game him and Mr. Grace got all going on. But anyway, Mr. Grace told him, I'm telling you. You ain't gonna never come back up in that kitchen no more, bitch. And say, that's your word. You promise I ain't gonna never get back up in there. I promise you, you can't come back up in here. You heard? <laughs> so it was busy mission to get back in the kitchen on Mr. Grayson. You feel what I'm saying? So them two niggas, that was beefing. And eventually, busy made his way back in the kitchen on Grayson. Grayson, matter of fact, Grayson told uh, busy nigga, if they let you back up in this kitchen, I quit. <laughs> Busy got back in that kitchen. Mr. Grace ain't quit, you hear me? He stick to his words, you hear me? But anyway, yeah, man. Uh, so, bam, uh, I wound up there. You know, like I say, Busy, you know, Mr. Grace got it kicked out the kitchen. Boom, moved to the back. They moved him Busy back up in my dorm. They moved him to D-Dorm now. But they hadn't moved him back in the kitchen just yet. He was in D-Dorm just waiting. So, uh, boom, laid up there and, uh, me and this nigga busy playing chess one day. You know, this what we do. It's a weekend, bro. And like I say, I could have all through the weekday. And I can move out this thing. And then, like I say, they got this little short woman named Miss Ertha. She don't work there no more. That's why I can say her name, you hear me? But she was the sergeant at the time. This was my dog right here. She a motherfucker, you hear me? She with the shit. You feel me? So, uh, all I'm doing, I ain't never made a move on this one. I used to play with her. You know, I used to play with her from the shower. To the, you know, just conversation. She gonna let you say whatever you want, you hear me? But, uh, boom, man, she used to reciprocate. So, uh, man, this nigga busy playing chess one day. Man, and I'm, it's the weekend. I'm like, man. I'm like, man, I'm busy. Man, I'm finna go try to fuck Earth. I'm about to go try to fuck her. That nigga busy say, huh? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm trying to fuck Earth. You heard? I got my mind on Earth, you heard me? So, uh, little sharp motherfucker, you heard me? So, uh, she old school too. She late for this, you hear me? <laughs> so, boom. Nigga, I goes out, boom. I goes to the laundry room to get my fucking clippers and shit and plug pull up. He like, man, you got your clippers? He like, go ahead, shave me up, boot to boot. So, me and this nigga plug, we sitting by the, by the uh, laundry room and shit, and I'm shaving his head and shit. You know, and this nigga say, God damn, man, that this people's ass soft as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying to myself, huh? This ain't you right or you fucking. Now, see, you talking to me, because I'm out here. And like I say, we've been. We've been fucking with each other a little bit, you know, since I, since I, you know, do the hair thing. And so, uh, he just running shit. So I'm like, this nigga out here cutting up. Whole time, nigga, I come out here to try to really bust Eartha up. Cause it's the weekend and she running the whole shift and people's just on as a little CO, a little key turner, right? So, um, after I finish cutting this nigga hair, he jets out, goes up to booking. You got Eartha up and booking. I don't even see people's, you heard me? So, uh, I goes up in the laundry room. To put up my haircut supply. I just come out here to stunt, man. You hear me? I'm about to go up here. I'm really trying to. I'm going to fuck Miss Eartha. So I goes up in the fucking lodge room. When I come back up out the lodge room, before I get out, it's got the door right here, right? The door. So with my head up under the door, pitch who people who walk up in front of the lodge room and block me in there. They walk up face to face. She say, say my name. I say, say your name. I just know about her last name. So I called her the last name. She say, nah, don't say my last name. Say my first name. I'm like, shit, I don't even know your first name. She like, Miss Peoples. So I said, Miss Peoples. She done that little situation again and took out the... I said, oh, 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 hold up. Come here, come here. She done fucked me up. Nigga, I come out here to fuck with Eartha. And the whole time, I never forget. It's 1999 Father's Day. You heard me? Boom, immediately I come up out of that laundry room. I'm fucked up. 
She done fucked me up. This surprised me. I ain't. This the same woman I was fantasizing who ran me out the shower. So let's reverse the psychology. When she saw me in the shower doing my thing, oh, she really was intrigued by that. She just put me on the blast to let me know she was watching the nigga. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> so boom, I leave out the laundry, go up to the booking. Boom, I get to the booking. It's got a medical right behind booking. Picture Miss People, she leaning up against the medical door like this, yeah, looking all, you know, you know, like guilty and, you know, like interested at the same time. So when I get up to booking, so uh, I see Earth to Earth and say, yeah, motherfucker, I was digging your cute ass, you handsome motherfucker, but I'm going to let this whole hell have you. I'm like, that's how y'all rock it. I'm like, I'm like, Miss People, when this happened, when we, when we got on this level, uh, I, you know, she like, Gun shy, and you feel what I'm saying? She like she she embarrassed. Now all of a sudden that we really talking. I'm like, shit, what's happening? So uh, Miss Earth did like this. She straight up like she sitting at the book, and she can see down the whole house. So she, you know, ain't nothing moving, and she she running. So she like uh, she like nigga, go over there and get you a motherfucking holiday. Go get you a Father's Day kiss, nigga. This is my mission. Every nigga, I've been, boy, look, you just don't know how much I've been wanting to kiss you on your lips. Boom, I push you up on her, grab her, put my tongue in her mouth, kissing her, and, and I'm touching every part of her body quick as possible that I can touch because this is what's been on my mind in my fantasy little world. You feel me? <laughs> she been in it. So I'm, I'm trying to touch everything. So Eric was like, all right, motherfucker, y'all break it up. <laughs> so I immediately break it up. Bring your ass back up here. So Eric was like, look here. You take your ass back to that dormitory and you better not tell nobody. You hear me? Man, what I look like telling somebody fuck? You got me fucked up, Erga. So, all right. So, I'm like, all right, Miss People, you be cool. Uh, we we, we going to run it. You heard me? No, she got to come back there. She watching our dorm. Boom. Get back get back to the uh, dorm. As soon as I get in the dorm, this nigga busy. He sitting at the table by himself listening to that pocket song. I pull up on him. I say, nigga, guess what happened? Guess what happened? He like, what, what, Greg? Because I just told him earlier I was going out there to fuck Earth. I said, nigga, I just kissed Miss Sa. That nigga say, damn. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, nigga, it's real. And I just put my tongue in her mouth, nigga. Oh, God, I just fuck with that. Yeah. So that nigga happy as a motherfucker. I can see he happy for me. Like, yeah, boy, you can fuck with that there. Yeah. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And tell somebody to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. You heard me? And prepare for the next episode, man, because we're going to close this thing out on that one. It's on.